Transcribed. Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the Franz Lehar operetta, The Merry Widow, starring Gordon McRae and his two guests, Nadine Connor and Jack Kirkwood. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another big musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, the beautiful and glamorous Nadine Connor is the beautiful and glamorous Mary Widow, Madame Sonia. Jack Kirkwood plays Baron Popoff, and I'm Prince Danilo, attaché to the Marsovian Embassy in Paris. Where is Prince Danilo? That's Baron Popoff, the Marsovian ambassador, calling me. Where is Prince Danilo? You see, I'm absolutely indispensable to him. Where is that no-good bum? You can see I'm <laughs> indispensable. Probably wasting his time at that wretched nightclub, Maxime. Messenger, go down to Maxime to see if you can locate Prince Danilo. Well, if that's where they're going to look for me, maybe that's where I'd better be. <laughs> Native land is calling me to come and work from one to three. Though as there isn't much to do, I only come at half past two. Diplomacy exhausts a man, and I know all the work I can, but never ever get to bed until I paint this town quite red. With all my lovely Maxim girls, I give them cash instead of pearls. So all my blondes and brunettes say, come out with us tonight and play. We dash off to Maxim's, where fun and frolic beams. While all the girls I flatter, they laugh and kiss and chatter. It really doesn't matter. I kiss the first at hand. And when the court will pop, we dance and never stop. The lady smiles so sweetly, I catch and kiss them neatly. Lo, lo, do, do, zhu, zhu. Clo, clo, my go, fu, fu. Till I forget completely, my dear old name. Prince Danilo, I'm shocked. Send these girls away. I must talk to you about affairs of state. Oh, all right. That's all, girls. Goodbye. Go, go, clo, clo. Shoo, shoo, pru, pru. <laughs> now, what seems to be the trouble, Baron? Prince Danilo, our native land, Marsovia, is in its hour of greatest peril. We're broke. What? But the Marsovian government is... Supposed Supported entirely by income taxes from its citizens. What happened? Last year, there was only one citizen in Marsovia who had any income to tax. <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. The banker, Mr. What's-his-name? Uh, well, it's no matter. He's dead. <laughs> but his widow is here in Paris making googly eyes at Frenchmen. Mm. And the Frenchmen are making googly eyes right back. At her and her 20 million. Now, if she marries a Frenchman, her fortune will no longer be taxable in Marsovia. And... <laughs> Our poor, dear native country will be busted. Roger. 
However, if the widow marries a Marsovian citizen, the 20 million will remain in our dear Marsovia, and everything will be, if you'll pardon the expression, hunky-dory. <laughs> well, Baron, that pretty well covers the plot. What do you expect me to do? You got to put something in the pot, boy. <laughs> By marrying the rich widow. Mm hmm. Why don't you marry the rich widow? How can I? Oh, yes, that's right. You're married, unfortunately. You have no idea how unfortunately I am. <laughs> Could I, uh, I meet this merry widow before I marry her? Mm, of course. She's guest of honor at an embassy party tonight. <laughs> There she is. See how the Frenchmen throng about her? Oh, I'll dance with all of you. The evening is young. Oh, good Lord. What's the matter? Why, that's Madame Sonia. I, I can't propose to her. Why not? Oh, never mind, Baron. I, I, I can't tell you, but there's a very good reason why I shouldn't marry Madame Sonia. There's an even better reason why you should. Thank you. Thank you. Very well. If you insist, I will sing for you. It's an old legend from my native land of Marsovia. There once was a bee, a witch from the wood. A hunter beheld her, alone as she stood. The spell of her beauty upon him was laid. to her. Well, this is against my better judgment, Baron, but I'll do it for Marsovia. Madam Sonia. <gasps> Danilo. You remember my name, Madam Sonia. I've tried to forget it. Oh, now, now, please, Sonia, let's not be harsh. Harsh? After all, you left me waiting at the church. It wasn't my fault. It, it was my uncle. Your uncle thought I wasn't good enough for you. Anyhow, I am rich now and a widow with everything I want. Do you have love? 
Luckily, I don't believe in love. You believed in mine once. Oh, no. No, really, Prince Danilo. Do you imagine we can pick up where you left me, at the church door? Now that I'm worth 20 million, do you think your uncle might approve of me? <laughs> Please, Sonia, try to forget the past. Waltz with me the way you used to. Ringing and singing, you lift your feet, follow the chime of the time of the waltzer's beat. Oh, come away, away, music is playing. Linger not vainly delaying. Take your partners while you may. Come dance away until the break of day. I'm in love with her. Oh, oh, come now, Danilo. You're not in love with me. You're in love with my money. Do you think that I'm like all these Frenchmen who swarm about you? All men are alike. Hmm? Well, I'll show you. May I have the next dance? If you wish. Good. I shall auction it off. <gasps> you wouldn't dare. Wouldn't I? Gentlemen. Gentlemen, your attention, please. Danilo, what is it? How many of you would like a dance with the beautiful Mary Widow? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. The dance with Madame. I have the next dance. But who will pay 10,000 francs for a dance with Madame Sonia? Not a single bit. Well, then, I shall have to dance with her myself. <clears throat> it will be your last dance with me, Danilo. Oh? For I'm marrying a Frenchman. I don't believe it. Tomorrow I shall be the wife of Monsieur de Jolidon. No. He has proposed to me, and I've decided to accept him. Well, what do you have to say to that? There's an old Marsovian song that says much more than I can say. There once were two royal children who loved when the world was so young, but never were happy together. It's just as the poet has sung. The prince never told of his passion For a very good reason, no doubt And so the princess was unhappy Because he would never speak out And do you suppose I am sorry? <laughs> I don't mean to cry That's what the prince said, and not I. And both said the prince has answered. They're married. I've finished with you. We 
that the prince coolly departed. Yes, and so will I. Where are you going? Away from embassies and marry widows. I'll go back to Maxine's. I've done with lovers' dreams. The girls will laugh and greet me. They will not trick and treat me. Lolo, do, do, ju, ju. Clo, clo, ma, go, fru, fru. I'm going back to Maxine's. I've had enough of you. <laughs> he loves me, I'm sure of it now. He loves me, so tra la 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 We shall see, so tra la 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 Wherever he may try to go, he won't escape me. We'll return for the second act of The Merry Widow in just a moment. Next week might be called Birthday Week on the North American continent, for on Sunday, the people of Canada will celebrate Canada Day, the 84th anniversary of the founding of that country as a politically independent nation. And just three days later, we in the United States will observe our own Independence Day. During the time that Canada and the United States have grown side by side in independence, there has developed between them a feeling of solidarity and friendliness unparalleled anywhere in the world today. Reflecting this spirit of international unity are the railroads of the two nations. For railroads of each country own and operate lines in the other country. Railroads of both Canada and the United States make free use of shortcuts for their lines across the territories of the other nation. And as anyone who has watched a freight train knows, not only do the cars of every railroad in the United States operate in the trains of every other railroads, but also the cars of Canadian railroads move in the same trains with standard equipment completely interchangeable. Yes, in these and in many other ways, the railroads of both countries work together to the end that freight originating at any point in either country can be delivered swiftly and dependably to any point in the other country. Because of this close cooperation between the railroads on our continent, there exists a freedom of movement of raw materials and finished products from which all of us benefit through a higher standard of living. Today, the railroads of both countries are busy at work, preparing to meet the transportation demands of both daily commerce and national defense. It is with this feeling of friendship, of working together shoulder to shoulder in long established and common aims in time of peace or in national emergency, that the railroads of the United States take this opportunity to salute the people of Canada and wish their great nation a happy birthday on Canada Day, next Sunday. And now back to The Merry Widow, starring Gordon McRae and his two guests, Nadine Connor and Jack Kirkwood. Danilo, I might have known I'd find you in this low cabaret. Hello, Baron. You certainly made a mess of things. I trust you with an important mission to marry Madame Sonia and save the Marsovian treasury. And what happened? She's marrying a Frenchman tomorrow. I'm sorry I failed you, Baron, but it's impossible to figure out a woman. Mm, yes, I know. There's something wrong with all of them. <laughs> when a man marries, he gets hooked with one that's either fat, homely, Selfish, cruel, or expensive. <laughs> Unless he waits. And if he waits, he gets hooked with a combination of all of them. <laughs> the women, oh, the women, 
How to win there? Tell and pray. That's an art I'm rather dim in, for there is no other way. Winning women. Winning women. For their lovers. And that's what nobody discovers. Not even an Edison. You may study her ways as you can, but a woman's too much for a man. It is deeper than diving for pearls Courting girls, 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 girls With her fair flaxen hair, eyes of blue She's a long way to knowing for you She is dark or she's fair She may smile or may frown Never mind, you will get done proud Women, 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 women. As you can, but a woman's too much for a man. Which is deeper than diving for pearls. Women courting girls, 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 girls. With her fair flaxen hair, eyes of blue. She's a long way to knowing for you. She is dark, or she's fair. She may smile. A most interesting observation, gentlemen. Oh, Madam Sonia, uh, what brings you to Maxime? I wonder, Baron Popoff, uh, what you say about the women. Uh, does that apply to your wife? My wife? Ah, don't mention her hallowed name. She is a paragon of feminine virtue. Well, the paragon just ran off with Monsieur de Jolidon. <laughs> what? <laughs> He's the Frenchman you're supposed to marry tomorrow. Oh, I just made that up. If my wife has run off, then I am legally divorced. Well, how's that, Baron? Under Section 4 of the Marsovian Married Men's Protective Act. <laughs> if your wife runs off with a Frenchman, you are legally divorced. How convenient. And now that I am free, I have the honor, dear lady, to ask you for your hand. In marriage? How else? <laughs> Will you marry me, Madam Sonia? Before I accept, I must tell you just one teensy-weensy thing. If I marry again, I lose all my property. <laughs> what? <laughs> all your millions? Down to the last mill. <laughs> Maybe I was a little hasty. <laughs> That's no way to put some money in the pot, boy. <laughs> Is it true you lose all your money if you marry again? Yes. Well, then... Well? Can't you guess what I want to say? Well, why not say it if you want to? I love you. Oh, and I love you. I've always loved you. Oh, sweetheart. Now, wait a minute. You're going to marry her without any money? Why, of course. Ooh, the man's crazy. But you understand, I lose my money because I shall give it all to my new husband. Uh, the woman's crazy. <laughs> oh, my gosh, they're all right. I'm the one that's crazy. <laughs> Well, don't you worry, Baron. At least the money remains in Marsovia, and the national treasury is saved. Well, tell me you love me again, Danilo. Not in words, my darling. Let me tell you with our own waltz. Oh, I say not what I may not let you hear. Yet the swaying dance is saying love. It's true, it's true, I love you so. And to the music's chime, my heart is beating time, as if to give a sign that it would say, be mine, be mine. But no, I love you so. Though you say not what you may not let me hear, yet the swing dances sing, love me dear. Every touch of me. 
much, ladies and gentlemen. Nadine Connor and Jack Kirkwood will be back in just a moment. The Merry Widow with music by Franz Lehar and book and lyrics by Victor Leon, Leo Stein, and Adrian Rose with English adaptation by George Edward was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The musical arrangers and copyists for all our productions are Warren Barker, Will Bytel, Carl Brandt, Gus Levine, and John Caper. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. Did you ever stop to think that almost every meal you eat includes dairy products in some form? To make sure that these healthful, appetizing foods get to your table, fresh and in abundance, thousands of men and women are at work all over the nation. Farmers who raise, feed, and milk dairy cattle, processors and distributors of the myriad dairy products, producers of farm equipment and other supplies. And vital to all these jobs are the railroads, providing dependable, economical transportation and helping to produce more and better dairy products, so essential to the nation's health and economy. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we want to tell you the big news about the shows we have for you in the weeks ahead. Our authors, Jerry Lawrence and Robert Lee, have given a light operatic setting to some memorable stories. And when I say howdy to you, for the next 13 Mondays, the Railroad Hour will present the world premiere of 13 new musical plays. For instance, I'm going to be putting on a baseball uniform to play the mighty Casey at the bat. And I'll be digging for gold in Roaring Camp. And I'll be falling in love in the most romantic city in the world in the charming new operetta, Springtime in Paris. You uh, can't fall in love with yourself, boy. Who's the girl? <laughs> the girl? The charming and talented Dorothy Warren, old Jack. And next week, she'll join me to sing the title song of our musical premiere, Beautiful Dreamer. Oh, I love the Stephen Foster melodies. Well, then I hope you'll be listening, Nadine, for the surprising romance of America's first great songwriter. Well, we'll be at our radios, Gordon. I'll have my head right inside the horn. <laughs> Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next week, this is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. radio adaptation of The Merry Widow has been based on the original American stage production as produced by Henry W. Savage by special arrangement with Tams Whitmark Music Library, Incorporated. Gordon McRae appeared through the courtesy of Warner Brothers, producers of Alfred Hitchcock's Strangers on a Train. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for The American Railroad. Now, keep tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. This program was transcribed. Your Monday evening of music continues with the telephone hour on NBC.